We are Unitarian Universalists. The pilgrims who came to the place we now call Massachusetts were our religious ancestors, even if they weren't our physical ancestors. And when they arrived, I am sad and angry to say that they didn't take off their metaphorical shoes. They didn't respect the holy place of the Nam Kiag people who lived there. The Nam Kiag and other tribes were already decimated by plagues brought by other Europeans. And some of them assimilated into the colonial communities. And later many were forced westward, but some stayed and survived. Over the next 150 years, more and more European colonists arrived and took what they wanted from the land. They bought and brought enslaved people from Africa and the Caribbean and forced them to help farm and build. And they began to argue. They argued about a lot of things, but the most important arguments were about politics and religion. Some of those arguments led to freedom Slavery was outlawed there in Massachusetts. Some of those arguments led to war. The Revolutionary War separated the colonies from England. How does a ragtag volunteer army in need of a shower somehow defeat a global superpower? How do we emerge victorious from the quagmire, leave the battlefield, waving Betsy Ross's flag higher? And religiously, some of those arguments led to us. In Gloucester, Massachusetts, there were three churches. The Congregational Church, in a lot of places, congregational churches later became Unitarian churches. The Baptist Church. And the Universalist Church. The Universalist Church was founded by John Murray. John Murray sailed over the ocean. From England he sailed o'er the sea. He just lost his wife and his baby, and he was as sad as could be. The Universalists believed that God was loved everyone without exceptions. The Universalists welcomed poor people. They welcomed black people. They welcomed people who were different. And in Gloucester, Massachusetts, like in a lot of New England, the Congregational Church was almost part of the government. Sometimes the mayor and the minister were the same person, and everybody who lived in the town had to pay taxes to support the church, even if they didn't go to church or if they went to a different church. So the Universalists in Gloucester stopped paying those taxes. And then the town of Gloucester tried to take away the church property to cover the taxes. And the Universalist Church went to court to argue that there should be a separation between the church and the state. That taxes should pay for things that everybody in the town needed and wanted, regardless of what religion they were. And that churches should get the money they needed to exist only from the people who went to church there and wanted to give them money. And the court agreed this ruling became part of the ongoing argument about how the United States of America should work. My client needs a strong defense. You're the solution. Who's your client? The new U.S. Constitution? No. Hear me out. No way. A series of essays anonymously published defending the document to the public. No one will read it. I disagree. And if it fails. But that's why we need it. The Constitution's a mess. So it needs amendments. It's full of contradictions. So is independence. We have to start somewhere. It led 
to the First Amendment to the U.S. Constitution that says that the government can't regulate religion or prevent anybody from practicing their religion. We are still arguing about how our country should work. We are still arguing about who belongs and what it means to belong and what you have to do if you belong here. It's a good argument to keep working on.